When this started, many of the migrants we saw, the asylum seekers, were Haitians. Right after President Trump had announced that their temporary protected status would be lifted uh, uh, by 2019. Yep. That, those were the early waves we saw. Yep. Um, now we seem to be seeing a lot of folks from from Africa and, and, and various conflicts there that, that are getting visas, temporary visas coming to the U.S. and then once they get in the U.S. they're heading <laughs> for the border and heading yeah, for Canada. Yeah, it's a convoluted situation. It's easier to get a temporary visa to come to the U.S. than it is to Canada. So these folks from the from Nigeria, uh, mostly, get a temporary visa to come to the U.S., and they're in the U.S. only for a day or two, just forever, how long it takes them to come to Plattsburgh so they can enter Canada through the Roxham Road, then they make their asylum claim there. Um, so for a temporary visa, it's easier to do it through the U.S., but for an asylum claim, you have more chances of winning in Canada, which explains why uh, they come here first and then they come to the Plattsburgh. Is Canada reaching out to immigrant communities in the United States to make them aware that it's not a guarantee that you get in <laughs> Canada and are they trying to dissuade them from coming to Roxham Road uh, and cross the border? They are. Uh, they're starting to. They're, um, Canada sent uh, a person to Miami to consult with the local Haitian community that Canada was not, you know, the, the, the golden, golden goose. Uh, a lot of the claims will be denied. It's not uh, Canada is not the only answer to the immigration issues. So they've sent someone to Miami. Uh, I think that they've also sent out leaflets in Nigeria. Um, I think Canada favors uh, the refugee um, process rather than asylum. The refugee process, you're, it's adjudicated, let's say from Nigeria. If you apply from Nigeria, it'll be processed at a consulate in Nigeria. And if you're granted refugee status, uh, your clearance is checked over there. When you do come to Canada, you're a landed immigrant, you're a permanent resident, it's a lot easier to process. The work is all done ahead of time. That can also take a year or two. But I think Canada favors that uh, process rather than just having these thousands of people show up at the border irregularly. It's easier, I think, to manage the, the case flow and the flow of, of uh, immigrants as well. Do you think Canada, you had talked a little bit about this, do you think Canada is going to reach the saturation point where they may say, we've got to do something about this. We just simply cannot have these uh, waves and waves of migrants crossing the border. I think eventually they might set quotas. I, there's already some quotas set. I'm not an expert in that field, but I think eventually they might set quotas. But there's a huge difference in how Canada sees immigrants. Um, in the U.S., in you know, recent debates, it looks like I feel that immigrants are treated as, as a burden on society. They're going to drain, they're going to cost us more, they're going to drain our resources. In Canada, I think the, the overwhelming feeling from having all these immigrants is that they add to the fabric of, of Canadian society and sure, they might need services at first, but most the overwhelming majority of people that do get into Canada, they want to go there to work. They want to be able to provide for their family. They're not there to to be a drain on the resources. In a matter of years, they're gonna be taxpayers as well. Uh, that's why it's all such a stark difference between how uh, immigrants are treated while their petition is pending in the US versus how they're treated in Canada.